Hey everybody, this is your co-host, Zach Briggs. We wanted to take a minute and let you know that this episode ran longer than we would like. Our goal is to have episodes that are around 30 minutes each. This is difficult to do, and there's so much good information that we'd like to share with you. Please stick with us as we try to find a careful balance between the depth of information and the length of our videos. One thing that we'll be doing in the future are deep dive episodes. These episodes will be done with the goal of providing as much information as possible on a topic. They won't have the time limits, and they'll be more complete. We felt this was better because you can choose to dig deeper into a topic if you want to at your own pace. Please let us know if you would like us to do a deep dive on a topic. You can do so at our website, DelphiMystics.com, or by email, by emailing mystics at DelphiMystics.com. With that, we'll return you to your episode. Welcome to Delphi Mystics with Zach Briggs, Dave Nottage, and Jim McKeith, the weekly podcast that demystifies the dark arts of Delphi development. For episodes, links, and information, or to participate with us, visit DelphiMystics.com. You can also find us on YouTube, Alexa, so you can get those little news briefings, Google Home, Patreon, your favorite podcasting app. We have video and audio versions available. So wherever you're looking for your news and podcasts, we're probably there. If not, you can send us an email at mystics at delphimystics.com. Uh, so if you have trouble subscribing or you want to drop a line to uh, for tips, tricks, etc., how you would like to be involved with us, mystics at delphimystics.com. And you can also submit your tips and such on DelphiMystics.com as well. If we use your tip or trick in an episode, you will receive a free Delphi Mystics t-shirt or coffee mug. That's right. We have t-shirts and coffee mugs on, guess what? DelphiMystics.com. You can find those there. We do support international shipping. So most places in the world should be able to get it. We'll probably find somebody who can't. Uh, it's nothing personal. We're working on that. Anyway, with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Jim McKeith. I'm a developer advocate and engineer here at Embarcadero Technologies, longtime Delphi developer and huge fan of the platform and community. Dave. And I'm Dave Nottage. I'm an independent software consultant and I run the Delphi Worlds website. I'm Zach Briggs. I am chief development officer for a company called Rapid Kinetics. So this, you want to do this? I can. I got it. Uh, this is episode number two, Myths About Delphi. In this episode, we're going to go through and discuss uh, various myths that we hear um, every now and then about Delphi. And it, it, some of them really uh, are really interesting and you wonder where they came from. And we're going we're gonna to deliberate that here. Yeah. Well, I guess the first, I don't know if it's a myth or not, but I've heard Delphi's old. Well, if by is. old, you mean experienced, battle hardened, <laughs> and uh, you know, built like a tank. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, it, so Delphi came out in '95, which is the same year Ruby, PHP, Java, like a oh, lot oh, of yeah. other. Yeah. Oh yeah. Prime I languages we use today. today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, Python's made this really big uh, resurgence recently. And uh, due to deep learning, and Python actually is older than Delphi. Yep. Yeah. In fact, far, far older. In fact, I think it predates uh, Pascal, but I can't be sure of that. Wow. So Delphi, of course, based on Pascal. Pascal's been around a while as well. Um, it came after C, but predates C++, if I remember correctly. Uh, anyway, but it's most languages, you can actually find this chart that has all the languages has like this tree showing what influences what and how they inherited. Mm -hmm. And so they've all evolved over time and have heritages from different places. You know, Delphi has influenced, you know, C sharp and has been influenced by other languages. So, you know, that, that heritage, yeah, it's been around for a while, but all languages have been around a while. It's very rare. You yeah. see a language <laughs> that doesn't descend from or inherit from something else. So I yeah. old, Even that's hard to say, really. <laughs> yeah, even Kotlin's like a offshoot of Java, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and you like you got Objective C is actually a, a predates Delphi, and so does oh, yeah. which is what drives WhatsApp. 
Yep. So. But it, I guess the thing is people think, oh, it's old. That means it's obsolete, right? Yeah. Yep. I think that's the concept. Yeah. I think, I think they associate the, uh, and I think, I think some of that was um, some good marketing that was done, but uh, I, I've always loved the fact that Delphi tends to um, stand without having to do a whole lot of marketing. They, uh, I mean, there obviously there are marketing operations, but they don't, you don't browse the web and every other click is a clickbait for Delphi. You know, it, it's a, it, it's one of those things where it, it, it kind of stands on its own and stands with its, its own capabilities as a testament to what it's capable of. And I, I think that the, the whole concept behind obsolescence with it uh, stems a little bit from, you know, the whole old obsolete stems a little bit from the, the thought process that, uh, that it's somehow been superseded. And, you know, if you look at the definition of obsolete, that means, uh, you know, no longer updated or maintained, which is not true. Um, it means uh, superseded by, by another better product. Um, and there are moments where I, I can show you things that Delphi can do that other applications can't. So, I, I mean, I think that's, that's how I would kind of come at the whole, hey, isn't that obsolete? Yeah, I think you can legitimately say, so when Delphi came out in 95, it was a good five to 10 years ahead of everything else out there. Um, mm -hmm. When I wasn't at the event, but I've heard from numerous people that mm -hmm. the Microsoft reps in the front row that saw the demo, when they could have a exception occur in the application and not kill it, not die, and be yeah. able to handle exceptions, and yeah. easily drag and drop stuff people were just falling out of their chairs like oh my goodness i can't believe this you know and yep. so when delphi came out it was wow gangbusters ahead of everything uh the bde made working with databases so easy and so it was way ahead of its time um since then uh visual basic you know get came started coming around getting pretty good still delphi was a lot better uh dot net came a long ways as well. And so we had some other stuff that started to catch up and maybe be competitive feature wise with Delphi. And so that might be part of it. People are like, oh, well, you know, that was back when, you know, there was nothing else to use. Well, now, yeah, we have choices now, but Delphi still being updated, it's still uh, supporting other platforms, still supporting new language features, APIs, et cetera. So it's still being updated. It hasn't been superseded, but yeah, there are other choices today. Hey, when was the last uh, patch release or update? <laughs> Um, I, I know month. this is this is a fuzzy fuzzy little point of reference because you know the episodes aren't live. But uh, what would be the July? The July? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, actually, there may have been. I think it was end of July. We had ten three two come out, and I think there was yeah. a patch. There was that, a couple of patches. There were yeah. There were there were four hot fixes before that. <laughs> yep. After so, ten three two, so those would probably have been in August. August. So yeah, it's updated really regularly. Um, there typically is a new version about once a year. I think there is not going to be a full release in 2018. There, I think it's going to be the next full release to be in 2019. Uh, so yeah. it sometimes will be two a year. Sometimes it'll go a year between them. But usually about once a year, there's a full new version. And then usually two or three updates to that version, uh, minor releases, and then yeah. hot fix and patches as well. So, I mean, by that notation, definitely not, uh, definitely not obsolete. And, uh, you know, I, I think it stands its own there. So, hey, uh, Dave, what's, how, how would you, or how have you responded to, um, I, I know how you probably like to respond, but how, how have you responded <laughs> to the statement? Uh, isn't that obsolete? Um. I don't know if I've ever actually uh, been uh, us told that. Um, yeah, uh, maybe not being used anymore is maybe the 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 messages I get. And to answer that, well, I say, well, I'm still using it, <laughs> so there's at least one. But uh, also say, you know, uh, about what Jim was just saying about how far the product has come. So. And that, you know, it, those sort of things don't happen if nobody's using it. So there's obviously yep. a big user base to support uh, the development, Delphi. Yeah. And 
and then I can list off, you know, people I know that are still using it. Uh, the fact that I'm working for people that use it. So yeah, mm -hmm. along those lines. We, we well, have, uh, I've, I've worked with some other people. Um, oh gosh, what's his name? Uncle Bob. I was talking to him recently about doing a some big cross fan of Uncle Bob. Yeah. And <laughs> I was talking to his business manager and I'm like, hey, we want to do some videos with Uncle Bob. And he was looking at our YouTube channel. He's like, wow, you guys get quite a few views on some of your videos. It would be great if we could, you know, be part of that. So not all the videos on our YouTube channel have a lot of views because it's, you know, the long tail, but we have a number of videos on the YouTube channel that get quite a bit of views. So we have a lot of existing users out there. We have a lot of new users. I get uh, talk to people all the time that are bringing on new developers or people that are new to Delphi and wanting to learn how to use it. A lot of the communities, you'll see people frequently with uh, newer newbie questions, if you will, that are wanting mm -hmm. to learn how to use Delphi. So not only do we have existing users, we have new users coming on as well. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, in that uh, in that same vein, I mean, I, I think that the the clear um, myth that we need to to state here that we've kind of dived into, or you know, is I've gotten this one. In fact, I got this one uh, actually from a really close friend of mine just a couple of weeks ago, which is that whole nobody uses that anymore. Or mm -hmm. here's the exact quote: people still use that, and I'm like yeah can you name another language that i can natively compile for cross-platform for you know mac linux unix uh ios android uh you know you name it i write one code base i can cross compile for all those platforms and he went it can do that <laughs> and then the next one was but it's freaking ancient uh. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> got yeah. nothing but love for you mark <laughs> But I mean, it, it does bring into that, um, that, that same aspect. Um, I, I think that one of the things that we have to consider is the, the target audience for Delphi. Yeah. It's not, up until recently, to my knowledge, there was not a free version. Um, yeah, they're, and, they're off and on have been free versions, but they're recently yeah. now there's a really good free version. Yeah, so... I think that, that that tends to lend itself to uh, the, the kind of people that are going to use it are going to be the kind of people that can afford to pay for it and have those subscriptions yeah. and the you know the, the support license that uh, that that uh, actual product key and the you know the kind of people that typically use it don't really run around and blow their horn about it and it's not because they're ashamed of their product it's because they tend to be banks and government agencies and investment houses, and uh, you tend to have, you know, educational communities use it, and you know, Fortune 500 companies, uh, in the medical profession. Oh, yeah, hospitals. They uh, they definitely used to use it, and I think they still do for most of them. A yeah. lot of the EMR requirements have made it a little bit more difficult, but when I say that, I'm referring more to like the Delphi Seven era. I know a lot of hospitals that were in Delphi, they transitioned to handle the EMR requirements over to like C Sharp or some other platform. And then now they're transitioning back to Delphi because yeah. they felt that it was a lot more sustainable uh, as Pascal. That That's happened. I know a few people that have done that where they're like, uh, oh, we need to evolve this and they rewrite it in C-sharp or something. And then later like, that was a mistake. And then they move back to Delphi again. And I yep. can't give any specifics on that. Um, no, neither can I. Unfortunately, I, uh, I do I know. Did some consulting on it recently. I've talked to a lot of people internally that in Embarcadero and as well as people outside Embarcadero that have worked for very big, very recognizable brands. And the companies have a policy not to talk about it and i'm like can we please i'm like yeah no some of now some of them you might see them at a conference and they might be speaking on a non-recorded session and talk to you about some of the amazing things they've done for some places you would recognize things you would recognize and you'd be like oh i've seen that i did not know that was written in fire monkey you know mm -hmm. and so it it is out there it is uh, out there a lot and getting used a lot um, I know that we've in the past have said people use it, treat it as their secret weapon. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but there certainly are a lot of companies that uh, just don't want to tell about it. And it's not something. Uh, it's not a common always, question. Yeah, yeah. It's not I something mean, we always tell, do a good job of telling about companies that do it either. I never have a client say, hey, what language are you going to write that in? Yeah. Uh, just like um, I did a, a project with messaging and I started looking at other messaging platforms and go, hey, how are these written? How are, how are these assembled? What can I do? You know, what can I do better? What can I do similar? You know, where, where are my deficiencies? And one of the things, when I found out that WhatsApp was written in Erlang, and I'm like, what is Erlang? <laughs> I had never heard of it before. I still don't and, know what it is. <laughs> uh, it's actually, uh, I believe it's, uh, I think it's from Ericsson. I think Ericsson developed as an does it developed it originally as an internal switching language um, for their telecommunications equipment, if I remember right. I may be wrong on that. Probably need some citation there. But uh, you can look it up. It, it's uh, E R L A N G if you want to look it up on like uh, Wikipedia or something. But uh, it's yep. developed in Erlang, and, and I just I, I really thought that was interesting. That here is a product that has. I think it's had like uh, over $250 million of uh, money put into it over, over the years. Actually, maybe way more than that now because Facebook owns it now. But uh, you know, you're talking about millions upon millions of dollars of the money was put into it. And, and it was a full-scale uh, competitive platform bringing out new features. And it was written on a language nobody had heard of. And I just thought that was interesting. And it got me to thinking about the fact that most development houses don't broadcast, hey, I use Erlang, or hey, I use, you know, C Sharp or PHP. Um, usually, it's, they're going to use whatever is the right tool for the job. Um, I wouldn't say I'm going to write something in Unity 3D and then whip out PHP. Yeah. Um, just like, you know, I, I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm not going to jump into, uh, writing something in, in you know, some of these other languages, but then start by using something else that doesn't, doesn't fit with that, you know? So I, I don't, I think it's a matter of, of using the right tool for the job. Absolutely. And, and so, you know, and when a client comes to me, I can tell you right now, I've got clients that use VB. I have clients that use C Sharp. I have clients that use PHP. I have clients that are doing embedded C for firmware. Um, it runs the gambit and I can tell you that it, it's the, the client, I convinced a fortune 500 company to allow me to use Delphi to write their mobile apps. And it was not a hard convincing thing. I mean, I just simply said, here's what I can do. Here's what you want. These two joined together perfectly. And they said, okay, you have our blessing to do this. So yeah. 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 I, I think that's really what that, what that issue comes down to. Yeah. I, I've had similar experiences with places, you know, they're like, hey, we want a program that does this. And I'm like, okay, here's the tool that does this, this is the advantages. I'm like, okay, yeah. <laughs> if they care, it's usually, they're, you know, they just want to know, know about it. And then usually, yeah. Hey, uh, yeah. Jim, why don't you take this next one? What's that? That there's no support for it? Yeah. <laughs> well, we just talked about the updates. We just uh, released uh, yeah. some updates for it. Well, I think, that the, I think when we're talking support, we're not necessarily even talking necessarily the updates. Uh, I'm writing in Delphi and I run into a bug that I can't figure out. Yeah. This never happens to me, Jim, ever. <laughs> uh, well, in your case, usually there's, you're messaging me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if if not me, then you're messaging Dave. But yeah. there are <laughs> exactly there are people out there. We have about 200 MVPs, uh, most of which are Delphi related. Some of them are interbase or C++ uh, MVPs, and then uh, so they're out there blogging and involved in communities and stuff like that, running local events. We have uh, a number of online communities. There's uh, yeah. Dave runs one on Slack, Delphi Worlds. There's uh, Delphi Praxis is a big one in Germany, the out English version. There's a couple Facebook groups. One of, some of them are really big. Um, yeah. We have Embarcadero community. So there's lots of communities out there. People on Stack Overflow. Uh, occasionally, you'll see those pop up. Uh, Stack Overflow is one of those things that ebbs and flows depending yep. on the, uh, the current 
admins, it feels like. <laughs> um, <laughs> sometimes it can be harder to post on there than others. I, yeah. I was the, uh, I was in the beta on Stack Overflow. My user number on Stack Overflow is 255, which I think is pretty cool. Hmm. And uh, I was the first person to earn the two Delphi, the Delphi Silver and Delphi Gold badges. So, yeah. Oh. Um, but there are quite a few people now that have those on there. Um, but anyway, so yeah, there's a lot of people out there that use it. We have a lot of tech partners that are building uh, components specifically for Delphi. Mm -hmm. DevExpress is a huge player in the .NET component space and uh, JavaScript as well component space. They start out as a Delphi component vendor and they make still make Delphi components. Yeah. So uh, yeah, there, there's support out there. There's lots of, we have some amazing tech partners. Uh, Eli, one of our MVP said, chances are if you're looking for a way to accomplish something, uh, access a feature, access an API, do something you know specific, probably someone's made a component to do that with Delphi. There's a yeah. huge, huge, huge component uh, yeah. ecosystem. Actually, that was one of the things that, uh, that kind of drew me to Delphi in the beginning was uh, I discovered, uh, I think it's called Delphi Super Page. I don't know if it's maintained oh, yeah. anymore. Oh, yeah. But, uh, it was not that long ago. Let me look. Um, it's uh, Tories as well. Is oh yeah, still, they're not uh, Tories. Yep, Tories is that still Delphi was a go page. To site for me for a while. It's still up, but it's not updated anymore. Okay, it's been 13 yeah. years since it's been updated for Delphi Super Page. But I hey, think uh, Jim, you and I should take that sucker over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I just I remember being able to go to Delphi Super Page. I remember being able to go into IRC and get support and. You know, this has gone on for years. Now, I will say there's not a lot of support for Pascal on IRC right now. And I think that's because Slack has taken away a lot of the uh, common IRC channels. People yeah. are moving over to Slack more often. The other thing is that IRC is I'm not going to name, name channels, but a lot of times I feel like if you go into IRC or any other language other than Pascal and you ask a question, the inevitable response you're going to get from the first three people are RTFM and why would you do it that way? You're so stupid. Yeah. And it, uh, it interests me that this kind of festering cesspool has started there. <laughs> and, it, and if you wade through it long enough, eventually some old wise individual will speak up and go, Hey, here's your solution. But it's like you have to take 10,000 lashes before you can get there, <laughs> which has caused a lot of good programmers, I think, to shy away from IRC. Yeah. Um, I don't I... tend to find that with the Delphi community. I don't get, I, I don't write something on a forum and have some person reply back with, oh, that's a terrible idea. Oh, you, you're so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't have that. Yeah. Um, and so I think there's lots of support. I think you need to get plugged into forms. I think you need to get plugged into slacks. Uh, hey, you know, and, and I honestly, I didn't talk to Dave about this before I did this and uh, he's probably going to kill me. But, uh, <laughs> if you want to hook up with the Delphi Sorry. mystics, uh, jump on the, uh, Delphi worlds, uh, Slack channel. <laughs> Slack channel. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a link get into to the Delphi, Delphi worlds worlds. organization. Yeah. I think it's, is it Delphi worlds.slack.com? Um, no, oh, well, there's a link on the uh, Delphi Worlds uh, homepage. Okay. Join the Slack. Well, it says join the Slack team. We'll put that in the show notes, so, the description. Yeah. But uh, yeah. but yeah, definitely uh, go there, jump in there. We'll, we'll, I, I can't speak for Dave. It's, a, it's yeah. Dave's thing. But uh, you can actually invite yourself because um, that was the one of the drawbacks I found with Slack. It seemed yeah. to be a drawback at least is that uh, you needed somebody else to invite you. But uh, with this link that I set up, it uh, uses a um, PHP script to actually self-invite. So, no, PHP, yeah. you still people still use that? <laughs> That's so old. So old. <laughs> uh, so Although, honestly, when you say IRC, I'm like IRC. People still use that? Oh. So you use that? That's so old. It's like almost as old as NTP. <laughs> okay, don't make me bring up Gopher. I'm just saying. <laughs> And and did you just diss NNTP? NNTP. Oh, because I was God. on Usenet just just two nights ago, man. I know, <laughs> I know. There's still people use it. It's it, and that 
you know, I think that's a really good actually example is, yeah. you know, we might say, hey, wow, Slack, there's their IPO, you know, they're in the news, they're exciting and cool, but I, I don't know the numbers, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's just people using NNTP or IRC or whatever, you yep. know, those are still around. So just because, you know, something's not shiny and exciting, yep. it doesn't mean it's, it's dead. And so, well, like, you know, yeah, it's the same thing with Delphi. That was one of the things I liked about uh, about IRC. Honestly, was that it was just it was always there. There was always like at least a couple hundred people there. You could ask a ch- ask a question, and you felt like you got a pretty immediate response. Um, and again, like I said, it's turned <laughs> a lot of them have turned into some festering cesspools. I don't know what the what the deal is with that, but um, well, and that's a channel thing specific actually with IRC because you could be yes, in, in, yeah, because you know. well, like. Um, I can't say the name of the company because because uh, I can't plug them, but they have an IRC channel and uh, it actually was completely responsible for me getting into electronics engineering and and design. Cool. And because the oh. people there were so helpful and so educational, and just did a great job of of getting me introduced to it that I was able to remain inspired and just run with it. Cool. Um, and. I guess I, I do want to say if you're having problems finding a Delphi community for yourself and you, you want to get plugged into one, you're also welcome to email us, mystics at delphimystics.com. Uh, yeah. And we are more than happy to, to point you in the right direction for your community. Yep. And my dog, this is Bo. He just came to oh. say hi. Hi, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, guys. So let's go on to uh, the next one here that uh, – uh, actually, we already touched on that. I, I think we I think we did. The ne- the next myth is there are no current resources for it, which um, I think I I think we covered a lot of this already. Yeah. But I do want to bring up um, if by resources you mean there are no third party providers of components or help, that's not true. Uh, right. You're looking at one of them on the screen, and I'm happy to help <laughs> anytime. Uh, you know, Jim's not third party, he's first party. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're, we're more than happy to help. There's also tons of books. I can think of like seven books right now uh, that are available on Amazon yeah. in both hard copy and electronic format. Uh, yeah. Some that were written by some extremely smart people that have been doing this for so long that uh, they themselves should own their own mystic spirit. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and then you go up on YouTube and, and it's like, uh, it's like Jim mentioned earlier, there are literally thousands of YouTube videos. Um, yep. in fact, there are thousands of YouTube videos and it's like dealer's choice on whatever language you want for them. Uh, you know, spoken language. Yeah. Yep. Like I know there yep. are videos up there in Russian, they're in English, there's videos Spanish. up there in uh, oh, Portuguese yeah. too. Yep. 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 Um, I, I know that there, there's a great many videos up there. And so I'm really, really impressed with the amount of community support there too. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Hey Jim, yeah. nobody's hiring for Delphi. Uh, that's uh, yeah. I hear that one. So that <laughs> there's actually two, I will say there's uh, there are people hiring for it. I know I can think of a number, number of companies that are pretty much always hiring because they're just in major growth right now mm-hmm. with using Delphi developers. And I talk to a lot of people that are hiring and they can't find, you know, enough Delphi developers to fill their slots. They're, they're looking for experienced people, but it's interestingly, and I've had conversations with people and I think there's two things and these aren't necessarily unique to Delphi, but but two things that do kind of impact the amount of jobs openings for Delphi and as well as the number of Delphi developers available to hire is the first one is, uh, a company doesn't need to have as many Delphi developers as they will other languages to do mm-hmm. things. And one of the reasons is, is Delphi, uh, it com- it's a programming language, but it also comes with this big framework of components that oh, yeah. are really productive, like crazy. I can tell stories about doing demos with people and they'll be like, what in the world? How are you doing this? Anyway, uh, so it's yeah, really productive. You like it's voodoo. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so it, you need less developers with Delphi and uh, frequently. And also Delphi developers tend to have a high job satisfaction and aren't moving around as much. So yeah. those two things mean there are less, less openings, you know, because you don't need as many and the ones that you have, they're not leaving. So, <laughs> uh, so that, that, that's certainly part of it. 
but then, uh, so yeah, but they're, they're hiring. There are companies hiring. Gateway Ticketing is almost always hiring. Um, and Wide Orbit. Wide Orbit, yeah. They're always hiring as well. And I, those are the two I know of because I know people that work there. I used to work at Wide Orbit. I'm one of the few yeah. people that have left. They're actually, they're a pretty nice company. Yeah. Um, Dave, I mean, Jim's obviously able to speak for the, the job market in, uh, in the U.S. a little more when it comes to the Delphi stuff. Um, how, how, do you, how would you perceive the Delphi market over in uh, Australia there and, and kind of Asia? It's probably less in Australia now than it has been in the past. However, I do know that there are jobs being advertised because I have uh, job alerts pop up uh, via email. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, but I really don't have a good grip on, you know, the whole job picture here in Australia. Well, I mean, it's the same but problem I have. I, I don't just... search for jobs. Uh, yeah. I don't need one right now. Yeah. I've, got, <laughs> I've got my hands full. Um, yeah. The, um, I guess the other thing I could say as a, as a counter to this uh listen to our spotlight segments yeah <laughs> we're going to be listing Absolutely. jobs in there all the time yeah. and if you've yeah. got jobs you want to help us uh you want uh, us to help you locate a developer for hey send them in send them into our mystics at the delphi mystics address yeah and I, we, uh, I post uh i post delphi jobs on upwork from time to time as well so yeah so i i don't think that that's the case that there that there's no jobs for it um yeah so, uh, of course, and that's just one other thing I can add, though, is that it's not necessarily something that it's um, confined to one location because I do a lot of remote work. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, it doesn't, you don't have to be uh, in a location where there are a lot of Delphi jobs because, you know, if there's an opportunity to do something remote, then yep. you can be anywhere. Well, I spend half my year on the on dave's side of the planet and the other half on jim's <laughs> yeah they have joint custody we, 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 i have to i have to go back and forth you know? <laughs> yeah it's about um, time you came over <laughs> yeah actually i'm uh, i am getting ready to leave soon um all right so i don't know who wants to take the next one but the, the next one is people only use it to maintain old systems um uh, well <laughs> only would be the problem in there because yes, people do use it to maintain old systems, but they also use it to main to make new stuff. Yeah. Um, the, this is something that actually I'm very passionate about with Delphi is that Delphi has a huge commitment in backwards compatibility. I yeah. cannot tell you how many people I've taught. So I, I participate in a number of other general developer communities as well. And it's really common with other development tools. It's like, Oh, a new version came out, I'm rewriting everything again because nothing is compatible. Yeah. It, that's just the way it works with everything else. Whereas Delphi is really good about making it easy for you to bring your code forward and keep using it. And so, yeah. you know, you can take code that was written in 95 and mm -hmm. make it work on, you know, Windows 10 <laughs> pretty mm -hmm. easily uh, or figure, on other platforms even. I figure that if it's an old system, then that's a testament to how yep. uh, solid it is as a development tool. Yep. Yep. Because um, it's still, if it's still around. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it is, it's definitely a testament to the versatility of. Yeah. That too. Um, I think that my, my thought process behind this is uh, Delphi has a long founded history of being able to interface with databases and perform rapid application development. And so with that legacy comes not just the ability to interface with Fox Pro and DB2 and Paradox tables, um, but also comes the ability to interface with newer systems and, and handle it uh, in, a, in a way that's I mean, uh, I can use the example of if you got a if you got a tile contractor that comes in, no no tile setting job is the same, you know. Yeah. So you're you're going to end up in this situation where every circumstance is is different, and so experience led them to be able to uh, handle anything, and so I would say that uh, from a it from 
the heritage standpoint of Delphi, it is an artisan at dealing with uh, data structures and databases. Yep. And that is phenomenal. I mean, I frequently use Delphi to convert AS400 systems over to, uh, a, I mean, you name it, uh, anything from MongoDB to SQL to uh, MariaDB, whatever the, the client ends up wanting to go to. But the fact that I can do that, that I can say, okay, here's connector A, here's connector B, here's the pool in the middle to verify the data, boom, you know, yeah. and that there was uh, some of the jobs that I've done with that. The client said, Hey, we had a, another firm that thought they could do it, but they took one look at it and ran the other direction. And I looked at it and said, why I can do this on a Friday night while I'm playing games? <laughs> so, but uh, I mean, seriously though, and that's, I think that's where some of that comes from is that, yeah, it, yeah, it does maintain old ones. Um, but that doesn't, doesn't imply that it's not capable of also interfacing with new ones. Yeah. C sharp, mm -hmm. uh, or actually probably C sharp. VB, VB is a great example. VB maintains old systems, but it also interfaces with new ones. Yeah. Um, I can't use C sharp as an example because C sharp is actually younger than Delphi. But yeah. uh, the fact the fact that it is maintaining old systems is a testament to exactly. that uh, that it's uh, reliability. I yeah, I've uh, that too. Mm. I've been involved in developing systems that um, later I run to people, I left the company or, you know, did it consulting or something like that. Later I talked to them and they're like, oh yeah, it's still running. It's doing, you know, we, we haven't needed anything. I'm like, oh, oh that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I ran into a client that told me that uh, they're like, hey, um, by chance, can we get you to, to, you know, write an add on for that app you wrote us? I go, oh. Which app was that? And then they tell me, and I'm like, I wrote it? And sure enough, <laughs> I go into the help about screen. I'm like, huh. <laughs> and it just blows my mind because I'm like, I forgot I even wrote that. Yeah, um, <laughs> That's as bad as when I Google something and then find I did a webinar on it. And it's like, oh, <laughs> I knew how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave. Uh, yeah. Not Dave, Jim. <laughs> it's okay. Who's who again? Yeah. As long as I don't call them late for dinner. Trick okay. Um, you know, uh, Dave, take this one. The educational purposes? Yeah. It's only yeah. used for educational purposes to teach programming. Well, I think if it's being used for teaching, it actually is a good thing. I mean, you, you have to be, or not have to be, um, I was going to say you have to be out of your mind if you're going to use something to teach somebody something mm -hmm. only to have them not use it after they, so. they still use scratch for teaching what's what's this scratch scratch what's that? it's that graphical where you drag the little puzzle pieces that go together to make oh. programs yeah so yeah, that's great in concept yeah it, it's one you get it's kind of cool and i've seen other things comments mm -hmm. newer things like that and it's kind of cool but then i just get tired of it really quick uh, Have you seen uh, ModKit for Arduino? I think so. I was looking at one the other day called UI Flow. Although yeah. we're getting off topic, but uh, Boy and Mitov, Mitov Software makes a thing called Visuino for Arduino that is actually mm -hmm. a really good way to, to do Visuino, Arduino development. Yep. But uh, that's beside the point. But I think the origin of this myth, actually, and I'm going to, I'm sorry, Dave, I'm stepping on you here, is that's cool. Turbo Pascal. What one of its original design intentions was to teach proper programming methods, uh, and and uh, or not true Pascal Pascal sorry the original Pascal, but then when Anders Hausberg, which you may recognize as the guy behind uh, C sharp and a number of other great you know uh, TypeScript and stuff, yep. he when he made Turo Pascal, he evolved it to make it more utilitarian, more useful. And then over the years, that evolved. So way back in the beginning, it did have its roots in being a good language for teaching proper programming practices. Yeah. But it has certainly evolved well beyond that now. Yeah. But it does still have the legacy of being, um, it makes it easier to make code that's easier to read and maintain. 
I've yeah. seen people write code that's not easy to read and maintain, <laughs> but generally speaking, Delphi code yeah. is much easier to read and maintain than other yeah. code. And that's really important yes. because uh, you spend more time maintaining code than you do and reading code than yeah. you do writing it. Do you think yeah. that, uh, that Uncle Bob would be uh, willing to, you know, he's the, the whole founding father of the clean code series. Uh, do you think that he would actually be willing to admit that Delphi is easier to read? <laughs> <laughs> we, I don't know if we could get that lucky. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, I, I think that yeah, I think the foundation of Delphi does tend to lend itself to be more readable and a little more proficient. But uh, I think it is, in some ways, like any other language, if somebody tries hard enough, they can really muck it up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and – Delphi you know, does support you know, GoTo. It does support <laughs> GoTo. Man, don't tell That's people that. That's a weird, man. Don't <laughs> tell people that. Um, Actually, so there, there was a uh, – oh, I was going to share this. I read an article a while back about uh, go-to and pragmatism, I think it was, dogma, and saying that really go-to, there's a, if you look at a lot of like big open source code bases, go-to is being used. So go-to is not inherently bad, yeah. but you wanna make sure you use it, it appropriately. I've used it once in the last uh, 12 years, and it was because I had absolutely no other choice. Um, <laughs> I had been written into a corner by another developer and I was, <laughs> I was having to maintain his, uh, his code. It was in VB actually that I used it and uh, I had absolutely no other choice. And I just, uh, I think eventually it was either myself or Ted or somebody came through and compulsively rewrote it because they couldn't take it anymore because that <laughs> knowing that go-to was actually go there. <laughs> um, I think that, uh, that one of the other things is that because it was commonly, uh, because it had these, these educational licenses that were issued to universities and K through 12 and whatnot, it was very easy for people to be introduced to it uh, early on and uh, throughout their uh, educational career. So when it came to taking a job, they already knew this language. It was pretty easy to, to have it just uh, organically appear in the commercial and public sectors. And I don't think that that's a bad thing. And uh, actually, I do want to mention this. Um, Jim, I don't know if, if uh, Sherry mentioned it to you, but they're trying to bring back educational life licenses now. Oh, yeah. So that's uh, I'm something I'm involved in with at LearnDelphi.org. Um, we are um, compiling and I'm trying to work with the community it's one of the unfortunately many tasks that I am mm -hmm. very excited about and spending as much time as I can on, which unfortunately is not as much as I'd like for it to be, but uh, that it's going to be Del learn Delphi.org is going to be like the, the hub for you can come to find uh, resources for teaching, learning the program with Delphi for learning the program with Delphi and Excellent. for educational academic licenses, as well as community edition licenses. So right. You can get a community edition license, anybody can, and we're gonna make it really easy to get academic licenses, which we've had academic licenses for the longest time, but how to get them hasn't always been uh, abundantly clear. Um, I, I think that's a, that's a critical thing uh, to, I mean, you, you look at the prominence, the rise in prominence of, of like the Unity game engine, and that was, I think, largely in part due to the, the free and academic licenses that were available so that it, they made it, I mean, they had a great product that made it really, really easy to get into game development. But the, but I think one of the things that really brought it out was that that ability to jump in there and get an academic license and use it with the tutorials. Um, yeah. <laughs> this next one makes me really, uh, <laughs> I, I hope you guys are over there typing up your, your, your lists to get ready to swap this down. Okay. And, uh, and I have heard this, and I really want to get it out there, hopefully without uh, without any dripping disdain. <laughs> That's not a commercial development environment. Um, what? It's a bit like that last <laughs> myth about it being just used for educational purposes. I know. It's like yeah. you can't have, these myths don't agree. Uh, so 
one of the big complaints I heard about, I've heard about Delphi is, oh, it's too expensive. Well, yeah, that's because most people that are using it are making good money doing commercial yeah. development. <laughs> I think we can combine this actually with the next one, which is nobody makes production applications with that. Yeah. So I would like to name a couple of applications right now that I know uh, a few of them were written in Delphi and uh, a few of them um, are still maintained in Delphi. And I, I will... I will cite for you Skype. I believe uh, all versions six and under were all Delphi. Uh, when Microsoft took over Skype, I, I believe they transitioned it. So I think there's still parts of it that are written in Delphi, at least the, the Windows desktop version. I think when they did the rewrote the, uh, what is it called, modern app version, I don't think that was written in Delphi anymore. But Yeah. So the next thing is I'm going to bring up is... Um, and this one's an older one and it no longer exists, not because of Delphi, but because the market changed. Uh, Game Spy was written in Delphi. Uh, Spybot, Delphi. <laughs> um, and Altium, to my knowledge, Altium, yeah. is still maintained still, in Delphi. Yeah. Jim, you were going to check on that, weren't you? That's the game, right? Altium? No, Altium no. is the uh, circuit board. Oh, yeah. Tool. I, you know, I was going to, and I never did. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I, I would love to get double confirmation on that. In fact, uh, I know of a guy who could probably answer that. He's over in Dave's neck of the woods. Okay. Uh, well, but, Dave, uh, go hunt him, hunt him down. Uh, yeah, his, his name is Dave Jones. He runs uh, EEV Blog, and I believe he used to work for them. And I don't know if that's considered proprietary information or not. So I will, uh, I'll give him a message and see if, uh, if Too late he now. can confirm it. <laughs> Uh, but I'm I'm like 99% sure that that is still written in Delphi, based so, on how things appear within it. Uh, got some other ones? I do actually. I have one that uh, I believe still the case. Toad, which is tool for yeah, Oracle Toad. application developers, yep. Yep. Uh, which is now owned by Dell, is written in Delphi. And there's a little bit of interesting backstory on that because. Uh, when Embarcadero bought the Delphi developer tools from Borland, Code Gear, they uh, said, wait, Toad is our biggest competitor. Um, <laughs> they can't buy Delphi. That, no, no, we don't want them to buy that. <laughs> and so there was a lot of, little of uh, friction there when, the <laughs> when that happened. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. but uh, that one's well known, well publicized. There's a lot of them that there's a number of games. Gosh, there's a lot of them I can't say, unfortunately. Uh, uh, a lot of... Age of Wonders. Stuff. What's that? Age, Age of Wonders, I think it was called. That's right, Age of Wonders? Yep. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you get that confused with another game, which has got something, a similar name. But Age of Wonders, I don't know if it's uh, developed with Delphi now still, but I know it used I'm to looking be. It up. Yeah. Uh, it does look like it is still... Uh, here's some other ones to throw out there. Uh, Cold Fusion and Dreamweaver. Uh, those were Delphi. Yep. Um, One Password for Windows was written in Delphi. What is it? One Password. Okay. Ah. Hmm. Uh, Nero, the CD yep. burning utilities, are yes. written in Delphi. Um, and uh, I feel like I got some other ones in here. And we, we could be at this all day. Oh, Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops Studio. Fruit Loops, yep. Ruby, yep. Yeah. Uh, written in Delphi, Win RAR, Partition Magic. Um, yep. I think the IO bit stuff was written in Delphi. I'm not. I can't swear to that one. It was Clone DVD me. and Ultra ISO. Uh, Beyond Compare. Oh, Beyond Compare. Oh, That's a good that one. is Beyond one of my <laughs> favorite utilities of all time. <laughs> yep. yep. If yeah. you're if you're listening right. to this and you have not used Beyond Compare, go to scootersoftware.com. Check it out. Yep. You will yep. be glad. It is. Uh, so incredibly useful. Um, oh, the MySQL admin tools. Oh, really? Written in Delphi. Media Monkey nope. was written in Delphi. KM Player. Um, I mean, oh, TeamSpeak. Oh, TeamSpeak, TeamSpeak and Hamachi both. Really? I didn't know that. Hamachi, yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those were big. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. I'm going to probably uh cut this off otherwise i'll be at this all day but uh i, I really do think it's interesting and, and if yeah. you like i said if you haven't ever uh, looked into what's actually written in delphi it's it's very interesting when you get down to it 
because there's just so many platforms and things that, that are written in Delphi and you just don't know. Yeah. I've so, toured uh, totally. factory floors, assembly lines and stuff like that. They're all powered by Delphi. I mean, it, it's, it's everywhere. I, actually, I was yeah. talking to one today about industrial automation, and they said there are probably very few uh, factory floors or places that have industrial automation that do not have some C sharp or Delphi running somewhere there, just because it's actually quite prevalent in that space. Isn't uh, isn't Delphi, or maybe not Delphi specifically? Maybe it's Pascal. I can't remember. Isn't it on the Mars rover? Interbase. Uh, well, base. It's on the Mars rover. I don't know that it's on the Mars rover, but it was used in uh, some of the testing of, of things. I don't remember the details. There was some things about that though. I remember um, actually Interbase was the database it used in M1 Abrams tanks for the longest time. I'm not sure if that's still the case or not. Hmm. Uh, US major crazy tanks. My brother drove those for a while. I should have had him check. <laughs> um. The, uh, but I think by and large, like, I really wish I could say who some of my clients are that I'm using Delphi with because they're fortune 500s. They're not oh, yeah. small. I mean, they're not, uh, they're, they're not little mom and pop insignificant companies. And, you know, and I, I also do use it for, you know, smaller nonprofits alike. I mean, it doesn't, it scales well for whatever the task is. So, yep. Yep. um, all right, let's slide past this because uh, <laughs> we can beat this drum all day. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, we already uh, nipped the uh, Delphi isn't maintained anymore in the mm -hmm. mud. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Jim's going to have a field day with this one. Hey, Jim, go for it. 64 <laughs> bit. So, yeah, you could, we have 64 bit support. Uh, Delphi 1 didn't have 64 bit, it was, it was 16 bit. 16 bit. <laughs> Delphi 2 is 32-bit, and then I don't remember when 64-bit was added for Windows, and now we have 64-bit for uh, iOS, and 64-bit for Mac OS, and 64-bit mm -hmm. for Androids in beta. 64-bit uh, for Linux is out. So, yeah, uh, we got all the bits covered. <laughs> I, I think that uh, wasn't Delphi – I think Delphi had 64-bit before Visual Basic did. I wouldn't be surprised. So not, not Sorry, not 64-bit. I think they had 32-bit before Visual Basic did. Probably yeah. to it. But Delphi too. Probably. Um I gotta but, hold on uh, one second. Sorry. Yep, you're fine. Uh Jim, would you like to take the next one? Uh Delphi applications so says they have a lot of useless bloat. That's actually kind of interesting. I've uh someone recently like, well, a hello world in on Android is a lot bigger than is Delphi than Hello World with the uh Android developer tools. The the once from Google, that's true. But once you add in the things you would add to a normal program that you would develop an actual program, then their size becomes closer to the same because a Delphi application has a lot of stuff that comes with it automatically. Like for example, the compatibility library. So yeah. uh, there, and there've been cases, someone recently did something, I can't remember what it was, I wish I did, where they made it a utility and then somebody rewrote that utility with Delphi and was smaller than the utility they wrote with Visual C++. So uh, it, there's not really a lot of useless, useless bloat in there. There is, mm -hmm. there are things, you know, if you're trying to make an executable as small as possible, Delphi might not be your best choice, but that's like a 1985 mentality. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and I think part of where this came from came back to, it used to be, I think in Delphi one through seven, if you just created a new VCL application and you saved it and compiled it, the resulting executable uh, with no components or anything added yet was, uh, I believe, a base of like seven uh, six hundred and forty eight k or something like that. <laughs> Huge. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, we 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 think about that now. And we're like, why would you care? Uh, and I think that if you did that same thing with VB back then, it would spit out something that was like in the 200 to 300 K range. And that so, was one of the things that, uh, that I think got used. Yeah. So one thing that's good to note is that by default, Delphi produces monolithic, meaning they're completely self-contained executables. There's no runtime libraries necessary. Whereas VB and C, Visual C++ both yeah. produced applications that required a runtime to be deployed with them. Now you can 
deploy your Delphi applications with runtime packages, which means that they require a runtime package, a runtime package to be deployed to install the system, that's possible. And I've done that. And there are reasons to do that. There's pros and cons to both. But the difference is the, the, the default, right? VB and C++ and C Sharp, for example, all required by default some sort of runtime on the system. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing with Java, whereas Delphi by default doesn't. Now, interestingly, we just did a webinar uh, a couple weeks ago looking at the advantages of Delphi for native app development on Windows 10 compared to Electron. So uh, Electron is the JavaScript-based uh. system for building applications. And I saw a, a blog post by somebody a while back who was working on, uh, who worked on Chrome in the past, and they had implemented the xbox controller support that chrome has in it apparently chrome has support mm -hmm. for xbox controllers and pointed out that every electron app out there what regardless of what its purpose is has support for the xbox controller now because <laughs> electron is based on chromium which is what's used for chrome and therefore it has xbox controller support built into it and uh so we looked at just the the memory usage and the binary size yeah. of a chromium app and wow, I, I, <laughs> you know, memory is only good if you're using it. I understand that, but wow. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah, I find standard. that a lot of Electron apps, I have to close them periodically or they can't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think, isn't Slack Electron? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, Slack. I think that uh, the new Evernote uh, beta that came out was Electron. Um, there's been some other ones along the way that I figure out, you know, like, Every time I sit down at my workstation after a weekend, I have to, you know, kill everything. And I figured out that it's, you know, well, I have these things written in Electron and, and they're always the things that I end up having to kill. And mm -hmm. it's probably related to that, uh, that memory creep thing. Yeah. So, hey, uh, this one, Dave's going to take, I think. So apparently if you use Delphi, you're stuck with the Boolean database engine. Well, it's actually a little ironic since the the BD is actually deprecated, and I'm I'm not sure if they does it even install with Delphi these days, Jim? Or it doesn't because I can download it, it so separately. Uh, it's a separate oh, download, yeah, still available, separate but download. it's okay. no longer so, installed by uh, default. So you're not stuck with it, and um, because you actually need to install it separately. However, uh, there are other options now like FireDAC, DB Express, yep. DB Go for Radio, and there's even a whole bunch of third party solutions. So I don't know how they got that idea. Perhaps um, it's just like an old concept. Yeah. yeah they're thinking back yeah. to the earlier days when perhaps that was the only option well, I mean, you did have. So you're you, clearly not you did dealing with, with developers. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're not, you're not dealing with active, active Delphi developers. You're, you're clearly yeah. not. I mean, you're, oh, yeah. you're dealing with um, developers who were, were, potentially past developers who got a preconceived notion. My guess is where this comes from. Somebody built a database application back in the, uh, you know, Delphi three, Delphi five days, maybe. And they, they tried to deploy it on another system. They probably discovered that it doesn't, you know, you have to take the, the BDE engine with it. BDE, uh, and then they probably had to look into licensing and then they probably got frustrated. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I'm not aware that any copy of Delphi was ever statically linked to BDE so that you didn't have a choice. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand. I'm pretty sure there was always was other choices. That Delphi, because Delphi shipped with all the source code to the components and runtime libraries and everything like that, it's always had a huge ecosystem yep. of third-party libraries. Yeah. So... Um, the uh, the episode is getting a little long here, but we're we're gonna try to get through the last couple. The last couple should be relatively easy. Uh, and I actually heard this just uh, just three days ago. With C sharp, I have access to package managers like NuGet, and you don't get that with Delphi. So there there are we have Git it the Git it package manager built into Delphi, and get that's it, something. Get. Yeah, I'm always trying to work. Actually, we. Uh, I believe there was talk of originally looking at integrating it with NuGet, but mm -hmm. GitIt has some features that NuGet didn't have as far as the way it's deployed. Um, I am actually, so in the bigger IDERA picture, IDERA acquired Assembla, which is like 
the enterprise of edition of GitHub. And Assembla has a company called MyGit, which is a package management system for managing package streams. And so we're actually looking at what we can do to integrate Delphi with uh, MyGit and then, or get it with MyGit and then add some additional functionality. Mm -hmm. So there's a, uh, NuGet's actually, I think is now part of Windows 10 or the latest version of Windows 10 has NuGet into it or can easily have NuGet installed. There's also Chocolatey is another one. Actually, no, that's right. Uh, it was uh, OneGit, I think. Anyway, there's a package manager built into Windows 10 now. And so uh, we're looking at expanding get it to support that. But hey, additionally, there's Boss and Delphinius and a number of other package managers for Delphi as well. So lots of options out there. Maybe we should, uh, I wonder if we should do an episode one time and discuss those sometimes about that. We could. The, uh, hey, you brought up Assembla, just so people don't think that's some weird random off the wall thing that just got brought up. Can you name some past and previous clients of Assembla? Uh, Sorry, past and, and current clients. I, just off the cuff. Are you able to name any? I let me go look. I can look on their homepage. I think ah, I put it on the spot. Uh, well, uh, Kellogg's, that, uh, Oracle, uh, Unity. That's right. Unity's uh, big on there. Uh, T-Mobile, Bear. Uh, they actually have a pretty big uh, thing with. They're doing a lot with uh, Unity. Yeah. So there you go. That, that's enough. I just I wanted people to realize. Hey, maybe we should go check out Assembla. Um, I I, I, I had not used Assembla. I've I had used Assembla previously before I dare I purchased them. I remember when they purchased them. I'm like, wait, I used Assembla before. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I, a number of people internally, it's, oh, I have projects on there. Yeah, I just one of the things I, I prefer to do is reinforce people's understanding of the brand that the brand is not okay. We have name brand, and then we have brand X. It's not that. I mean, you're when when Idera or or Embarcadero suggests a tool. It's not that they're suggesting, hey, we, we, we know that, you know, uh, that lifetime warranty on that, that wrench you bought is good, but here's this other one and it's half the price. It, that's not where, where it's going. Where it's going is, hey, we have some really legitimate, really cool tools that, uh, that we think that they would really help your organization. And I just yeah. want, want that to get out there. I, I frequently talk with Otnus about acquisitions and um, if, they're, if it's not a best of class there's a number of things like, oh, I really like this. He's like, yeah, it's not, it's not a big player. They're not making sales. It's not a good yeah. technology, and he's just not interested. It, it has to be a real serious contender before they'll even consider. Yeah. consider. Well, I, I do want people to realize I've not drank the Embarcadero Kool-Aid. <laughs> you can ask Jim. There's times where I'm just like, <laughs> I don't work for uh, for Idera or Embarcadero. <laughs> And I tell, I tell uh, all our MVPs and tech partners, and a lot of them give me candid feedback that that's exactly what we want. We, you know, yep. tell, us, tell us what we can do better. We're always, I, we know there's room to improve. You know, if you're a software developer and you think software ever exists without bugs, that's software uh. without features yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So yeah. I'm going to bring up the next one, and then we'll jump to the last one really quick here because we're, uh, we're getting pretty long here. But the... Uh, you can't use Delphi with Stack Overflow, uh, which we already addressed. You can't use it with Git, Azure, DevOps, or anything cloud-related. Well, well Git's integrated right into the IDE. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say. I can tell you right now, that's completely false. I, I do it every single day. <laughs> I, I work with, with AWS. I work with Bitbucket. I work with, uh, with Azure DevOps on a daily basis. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if, if you're having problems getting your stuff to work with those, email me, <laughs> please. <laughs> I, I will help you because I, I would rather not perpetuate such a myth. Yeah, there's, um, there's uh, Azure and Amazon APIs built into the, uh, into Delphi as well. Into yeah, the oh, I use them. Actually, yeah. I, I was just using them today. And there's third parties that extend it like crazy. Yep. Um, okay. So, and then the last one, and uh, this one, I think we're all going to laugh a little bit about you can't use app stores with Delphi. Uh, I, I'm not aware of one that you can't use it with. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, uh, we yeah, had. I can list some apps that they can go look at if they want. <laughs> yeah. So interestingly, when um, with Windows 10, so Windows 10 is a really big deal if you're not aware of this. 
because back with Windows Vista is when Microsoft started making, actually short before it was Vista is when they started making the push to .NET and they were saying Vista, which was originally called Codename Longhorn, I think was gonna have be like this whole new ecosystem that you had to use .NET to develop for. Yep. And uh, there was a big push away from native development. Windows 10, Microsoft's like, hey, native development's important. It's here to stay. It's a main player on the platform. All the Windows runtime is available to native, native apps. And they created this thing called Desktop Bridge that allows that and allows you to make a native app that can be run as a modern, I think they call it modern app. They call them Windows Store apps like that I as well. It was, I, yeah, I thought it was a uh, runs. UW, uh, they call it UWP. That's what uh, I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, universal, Windows universal Windows platform. Yep. Anyway, all that stuff's open to Delphi and Del when they were rolled out the release for uh, the mm -hmm. desktop bridge, anniversary edition, I think came out the day of, of that rollout. And it was the first IDE before Visual Studio to support building native apps for the Windows Store, all bundled right into the IDE. And yeah. that is, that's not unusual for Delphi. That frequently Delphi, especially on the Windows platform, is the first IDE to support features uh, mm. fully integrated like that. Um, as for uh, other stores like uh, uh, Debian, uh, you know the, the AppGet, Synaptic Package Managers, things like that. Uh, I know you can push Delphi apps through those. They they don't have any problem with that. And I also know that uh, that you can easily push to Android and iOS because I do it all the time. So yeah. that kind of rules that out. And then we have Mac, uh, the Mac store integration too. Isn't that there? I believe so. You, that, yeah. So one thing that's yeah. interesting. Deploy for oh, applications. Yeah. What's that, Dave? Sorry. You can deploy for applications tool with Mac OS, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, occasionally that they will change change the requirements and then there's you know there might be a, a lag in there where Delphi has to adapt to that but usually there's notice and there is pretty close. Uh, one thing that I will point out though it I've talked to some people about this and it's certainly something we can do better about but there are some third-party app stores like enterprise app stores that require special entries in your manifest file or something like that that are not exposed through the IDE but you can edit those files directly which interestingly is exactly the same thing you would be doing if you're using Xcode or uh, Android Studio or something like that. So yep. that's something I like to point out is that Delphi makes a lot of things really, really easy, but worst case scenario, you're doing the same amount of work that somebody using the other tools would be doing. <laughs> oh yeah, very much. All right, guys. Um, so I think the next episode that we're going to do coming up is going to be- We're going to do another uh, one? Uh, we're not doing it right now. We're we're gonna do it. Uh, we're gonna do it later. But uh, the next one that comes up is gonna be. Um, uh, oh, it was uh, monolithic development techniques. That's what it was. Okay. Uh, and and what that really is is we're just gonna discuss. Hey, how do you develop really large applications with Delphi? What you know? What theories do you know behind it? And what experiences have you had? That kind of stuff. So okay, cool. um, be interesting to to kind of go over that and and you know get everything from the actual to the theoretical. So. All right. Well, with that, I think we're all done. Hello, this is your co-host Zach here with this week's tip or trick. This week's tip or trick is pass counts in your breakpoints. If you have not seen all the advanced features in Rad Studio's breakpoints, I strongly encourage you to check them out. Hopefully, uh, you'll find them really handy with troubleshooting your issues. All right. So, uh, because we have some listeners that are audio only, I I will try to be as descriptive as possible, but I strongly encourage you if you get lost to check us out on YouTube or one of the video mediums, but I will try to describe it in a way that you guys can recreate it if you want. All right, so on the screen right now, I have a form that I've just created. This is just a standard VCL app, but it shouldn't really matter whether it's VCL or, or FireMonkey for this particular kind of thing but I've created a VCL app with three counters. And these three counters are actually handled by a thread and then they update the screen. So uh, I've created uh, three labels there that represent the number of iterations through the, uh, the thread has gone through and it's looped there. And uh, yeah, they're just drawn on the screen each time. So there's two buttons, a stop and a run. The, uh, the stop button just stops the threads and the run launches the threads. So we're gonna drop into the code here. 
All right. So in the code, uh, all you can see is the that we're in the BTN run click here. Uh, and within BTN run click, you can see where I'm creating three different two tasks, which are you know threads for those of you that aren't very familiar with threading yet. And all I do is I create them and then I launch them at the bottom. So and they, they'll just continue to loop until the variable, uh, the unit variable B halt is uh, switched from true to false, and then they will exit the thread. All right, and then so each one of these is updating its counter. So the first one, it just goes to a 10 count, and then it goes back to zero, and on odds, it will switch the font color to green, and on evens, it switches the font color to red. And then the next one, all it does is it just loops to a 10,000 count, uh, it does it quite a bit faster than the previous one, and uh, that's it. It just displays the count. And the same thing for the for the last one, uh, the third thread. It, it just all it does is it goes through an iteration to a 10,000 count. It's a little slower than the second one. That's all. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and apply a breakpoint here, and I'm applying it right on my counter, the one that you know the increment of the counter variable. And uh, so I've asserted that breakpoint, and then I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to go to breakpoint properties. And then I'm going to go down to the field that says pass count. And I'm going to put a six in there. Now let's keep in mind that zero does count. And so uh, it will actually stop after it's drawn number five on the screen because it's not going to process six. All right. So once it passes by that particular dot, uh, that particular breakpoint there, it's going to uh, count it, and the sixth time through, it's going to stop. So we're going to go ahead and flip back to design view. I'm going to hit F9 to run the program here. All right, and now I'm going to click run, and you'll see it count. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, and there it is. There is the sixth pass through, and it has halted right there where it's supposed to. So, and you can do different things with this particular feature. Um, and, you know, as always, if you hover over it, you can see the details. In this case, it's indicating pass count six of six. And, and you can do the same thing with, with other conditionals and things within there. I strongly encourage you to check it out. I'm sure we're going to do quite a few more of these on various breakpoint features because they're, they're a little bit of a mystery to some people. A lot of people don't even know they're there. And I strongly encourage that you learn them because they will come in handy a lot of times in the future. So anyway, uh, have yourself a good day. Thank you. <laughs>